Hello. It's me. Are you there? Are you out there listening? If you are, peace. The kingdom of God is at hand. Today is the twelfth day of the second month in the year of our Lord, 2024. The hour is 10.28 a.m. I am sipping cold brew while in a small chamber near the back garden. A cold draft is squeezing through the bottom of the door. I was born in the winter of the second month. My grandmother would say that for every birth there is a death. Why grandmother chose the second month of winter to flee this world is not a mystery to me as I sit in the coolness recalling the hours before her departure. Days before she decided to leave, she whispered in my ear, Layla, I've been thinking of taking all my blood pressure medicine. I answered her saying, Don't do that, Grandma. You don't want to show up in heaven uninvited. And there was a long silence. You see, Grandmother was a lady of etiquette who never showed up late, always brought gifts when paying visitations, and scrawled beautiful sentiments on every occasion card she'd ever given. Grandmother did not expect my answer, but completely understood. It was what I told myself when she changed the subject. I was simply reminding her of the manners she had always instilled in me. A week later, she was elated to have been diagnosed with pneumonia, insisting that I do not pray for her recovery. She was adamant she wanted to die. This was her invitation and any prayers might spoil the blessed occasion. I held her hands while she told me how she was with our Lord just hours before I arrived at her bedside. Frail, thin, and trembling, she appeared beautiful to me. There was a joy I had not seen in her face since I was a child, a blissful glow as she held my hands, asking our Heavenly Father to look after me in her absence. I felt an urgency in me, like I wanted to curl up beside her and never let go. You go now, and don't worry about a thing, not a thing, she said, smiling as I grimaced. You come back and see me again later, she said, nodding those final comforting words to usher me out into the world again. I knew even then as she shooed me out with those hopeful words, she was just attempting to comfort me, else I would start brawling like a child clinging on to her gown. Later never came. Grandmother was whisked away in the arms of angels a few hours after I left her bedside. She was gone. I had been going through chemotherapy during those months before her passing, and every memory of Grandmother was lucid. I recalled her asking me what I needed and I remember telling her a heating blanket, Grandma, it's so cold. She took a taxi out to Costco to buy me one that very night. 
Another time, she listened how I carried on about how uncomfortable it was for me sitting in the hard chair that I had. How my bottom hurt, my legs hurt, my back hurt. Everything after those long treatments at the cancer center. And she had hired a man to drive her in his truck to my house. Grandma, what are you doing here? I asked in the twilight of that night, shocked that she was with the stranger outside. I wanted to bring you my chair, she said, as the man pulled it off his truck. I paid him $25 to bring me here to give it to you, she said knowing that I had always liked the big velvet blue chair that swallowed us in its cushions. I thought about those days when my 97-year-old grandmother, the mother of my mother who died years earlier, had gone above and beyond to be there for me when the doctors pronounced me to have been dying. My adult children had never even called to ask if I needed anything. And when I considered all of these acts of love, my heart ached even more for her. You see, I found out that she would get her walker on random days and make her way to the cancer center, asking if I were there for treatments. But the days that she showed up were the wrong ones, and she'd been forced to hobble back to her assisted living center where she had snuck out from. Grandmother wanted to dote on me, but I didn't want to be treated like an expiring grandchild diagnosed with pestilence, given only months to live, so I didn't appreciate her efforts until it was too late. I should have doted on her. I should have told her how important she was to me, and that I wanted, needed, and loved her when she confessed her dreadful overdosing thoughts. It is written in Leviticus 19.32, You shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the aged, and you shall fear your God with pronounced reverence. I am the Lord. And it is written in 1 Timothy 5, Honor and help those widows who are truly widowed and without support, alone. But if a widow has children or grandchildren who are adults, see to it that these first learn to show great respect to their own family as their religious duty and natural obligation and compensate their parents or grandparents for their upbringing for this is acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God you see God instructs us to honor our elders parents and grandparents to care for them financially and in all lovingness So many people today speak in saying that their children are the future and everyone is focused on what the enemy plants in their minds, never knowing or realizing the words, the laws, and precepts of the Almighty. The children are not the future. This world is perishing and the only thing that will remain is the Word of God Jesus Christ, who himself set the example from the cross. In John 19, 26 and 27, giving the care of his mother to his disciple who took her into his own house from that hour. We must care about our elders. Only pay attention and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen 
and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your grandchildren, impressing these things on their mind and penetrating their heart with these truths, saith the Lord in Deuteronomy 4, nine. My grandmother was a light in the darkness of those days. And a few months after she departed this world, the Lord came unto me during a drip at the cancer center, saying, Rise, leave this place. You don't belong here. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And now I testify to you, the Lord Jesus Christ has healed me from stage 4 metastatic lung cancer, which spread to my brain, and of emphysema. And as he is, so am I in the world. For he was ordained to live, breathe, die, and rise again, that we who believe should have life abundantly, everlasting, that no evil could destroy. Armed with this truth, having become one spirit with my Lord, who has delivered me because he has delighted in me, now it's time for me to shine my light in the world, guiding others who are blinded by the imminent darkness of devilish forces. Loving the Lord and learning who he is and what he's done for you is only the beginning. We have been redeemed that we might be forgiven through Christ Jesus. Obey his commands. Establish a relationship with Jesus. He is our Lord and Savior, the Holy Lamb of God who has taken the sins of the world. God is merciful. Don't listen to the enemy, which is the Prince of Heirs. If you are hearing this, you can repent. Change. Renew your mind to God's will. Turn from sin. Submit yourself to God. And in doing so, dying to self. For it is written, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Just as grandmother said, For every death there is a birth. Jesus loves you, and so do I.